Now as you notice, if you look to the cable that's not been dressed in yet and how it all goes to the bottom here, notice there's going to be some wasted cable. And there's a reason for this. And the reason is, is in dressing out sometimes, uh, you don't know exactly how long you're going to need and you always want to pull more than you need. Of course here's a box of cable that we will recycle. But the bottom line is the most expensive cable used in cabling today is the one that's one inch too short to be punched down in the back of a patch panel. Because it's the labor to install that cable over again, it's wasted cable, things like that. And usually newbies want to save cable lengths, they want to save cable footage. And the way they do it is they try to estimate exactly how much they're going to need and only pull exactly what they need. And usually they find out the hard way that they get out of 48 cables they get 45 of them that actually fit into the patch panel and the others are too short and they gotta pull them over again. That is a wasted cable and it's very expensive labor wise. Now when we're all done here we're gonna ID each of those ports and where they go on the jack. And not only that we're also going to um, uh, test every single one because our saying is that if you don't test every jack the ones that you don't test won't work and so you test every single jack with a cable certifying handheld computer and uh, that helps you uh, to make sure every single jack works and once it's punched down once it's stabilized and that's something that Patrick will do here a little later when he's all done punching down all the cables on uh, patch panel A uh, once they're stabilized uh, and they're tested you're, you're not going to have any problems with this unless someone fools with the cable it's going to be tight, it's going to be connected, and it's going to be uh, doing exactly what it needs to do. And uh, it will last for many, many years. In fact, we actually uh, warranty our cabling parts and labor at Nova for 15 years. And uh, I don't think we ever had a go back. I don't think anyone's ever called us and said that install we did two years ago, uh, there's a jack that doesn't work anymore. Once you test it, once you install it, once you know that it works, it's been all certified and everything else, there's nothing that will change in that jack uh, or that patch panel or that cabling system. I'll tell you what, let's go take a look at the, uh, the technicians that are installing the jacks. It's a normal look for an uh, install as they're doing tenant improvements, TIs, and normally ceiling tiles are out, everything else. This is normally what it looks like. Wall needs to be painted again. In this room what we have is we have a technician that's installing the jacks. And it's a little dark in this room to actually show you the details. But we have some technicians that install the jacks on one end and then other technicians that are installing the patch panel. Uh, notice we have a white cable and a blue cable. It's just a preference. White cable is our voice cable. The blue cable is our data. He's using lineman scissors. It's a pretty normal tool to be using in this industry. In this case, this is a voice jack he's getting ready. And those scissors are special scissors used for cabling. They're not your normal scissors you find in your desk drawer at your house, but they're special hardened steel scissors. He's using a punch down, a 110 punch down. And he's only connecting the white, blue, blue, white cable. And the reason why he's doing that is because voice circuits these days only need one pair and that's called an RJ11 now next he's going to install the computer jack and this is actually a retrofit the building was used by another company before we came in and we're adding the computer cable cat6 computer cable And this excess he's cutting off is on purpose. Do not want to use a possible nick when you're stripping the cable back. Then what he's going to do is hook up all four pairs now with the computer cable. And these are the jacks we sell on our website. Cablesupply.com Of course the, the technicians today are all from Nova and that's our sister company. They've been in business for over 23 years and been cabling not only all throughout Southern California but all throughout the United States. Over 5,000 installations in the last 23 years. So 
So I'll let Matt get back to what he's doing. We do have videos on how to punch down an, an RJ45 and an RJ11 uh, on our site, so we don't need to go into the details there. But one of the first things we did when we walked in the building is made sure we had a floor plan and made sure the floor plan indicated where all our jacks were going to be. Now we don't have to number them at this point. Again, as I said earlier, you do all your cabling, you do all your punch down, and then you identify the jacks. And there's tools to help you identify those jacks. It's called a tone and probe system. You put the tone out in one place and, and you check which cable the tone is on and where it terminates on the patch panel and then you label it there. That is the the normal way to do it uh, and the quickest way to do it. But as you see all the ceiling tiles that have been put aside, besides the electricians being here, we pulled a lot of these ceiling tiles out, actually just push them aside and so we can pull the cable. Of course we pull the cable the shortest path possible back to the data room and you secure it in the ceiling so it's not laying on the tiles. It's way up high, being held up high, up in the rafters, off the ceiling tiles. It's nothing wrong with leaving them on the ceiling tiles. You can do that too. But uh, we always have a standard of putting J-hooks in the ceiling and hanging the cable up in the J-hooks. And as we walk along here, you'll see if there's enough light. All the cables are coming together there. And it goes into the data room. 